Hi, I'm Yasu Watanabe, here to talk about my joint work on certified program synthesis with Kiran Gopinathan, George Pirlea, Nadia Polikarpova, and Ilya Sergey. Imagine you're a developer and you need to implement a specification of a program that creates a copy of a linked list expressed in separation logic. And the precondition is a reference pointing to the head of a singly linked list whose presence is expressed with this inductive predicate. In the post condition, eventually we want the original list plus a copy with identical elements and an updated reference pointing to the head of the new copy. And this connective is called a separating conjunction, which says that the left spatial part is disjoint from the right. The linked list predicate is defined with two constructors, an empty case when x is a null pointer, and a non-empty case when x points to the value at the head of the list and x plus 1 points to the tail. At this point, any other developer would roll up their sleeves and start coding. But you know better than that. Instead, you feed the specification to Syslic, a program synthesizer that can automatically produce an implementation from a user specification. And voila, you get a list copying program. But just then, you're hit with a wave of uncertainty. Can I trust this result? The synthesizer was written by humans, so surely a bug could make it synthesize incorrect programs. Can we have a guarantee that programs synthesized by Syslic correctly implement their specifications? In this work, we discuss a way to produce this formal guarantee in the form of proof certificates for each synthesized program. The technique consists of generating these certificates using the deductive insight gained from synthesis. Let's return to this issue of trust. Our earlier misgivings arose because Syslic has a large trusted code base, or TCB. Ideally, we'd like to offload the burden of trust to something with a more minimal TCB, like the Coq Proof Assistant. Coq Proof Certificates are widely treated as a correctness guarantee for important theorems and programs. Syslic's code base is quite large, so it's impractical to verify its entirety in Coq. But luckily enough, Syslic's deductive approach to synthesis makes it suitable for post hoc certification, where we generate proof certificates for each synthesized program. To see how it could be done, let's understand how Syslic synthesizes programs from specifications. Syslic operates in the logical framework of synthetic separation logic, or SSL. An applied SSL rule transforms a synthesis goal into another one, while also emitting a residual program statement. Syslic synthesizes programs by enumerating the search space of SSL rules until the goal is reduced to a trivial entailment and a program is found as a byproduct. In theory, the sequence of SSL rules applied to synthesize the program should be all we need to build a valid Cox certificate. Interestingly, though, there's a fundamental gap between synthesis and verification proofs, which prevents a straightforward generation of these proof certificates. In verification, a program implementation is known ahead of time. This means we can use its structure to guide the proof, symbolically executing a proof step corresponding to each program statement. The precondition P is transformed as we go. Notice how Postcondition Q stays untouched. Only at the very end does the fully symbolically executed precondition PM get unified with postcondition Q. In contrast, during synthesis, we can't rely on an existing program structure, since that's what we're trying to derive. Instead, each successful application of an inference rule incrementally transforms the specification until it becomes a trivial entailment. Here, both the pre- and post-condition are transformed. For this reason, when SSL rules transforming the post-condition appear earlier in the synthesis proof tree, their insight needs to be deferred to the end of the verification proof. So one big question is how to bridge these two different styles of reasoning. Another consideration is that multiple program verifiers embedded into Coq can do separation logic proofs like Hoare type theory, or HTT, verified software toolchain, 
or VST, and IRIS, to just name a few. How do we uniformly support certificate generation for all of these verifiers? These two challenges form the basis for our work. To overcome the synthesis verification gap, we need a way to interpret synthesis proofs into verification ones. And to remain verifier agnostic, it must be an abstract framework that multiple target verifiers can instantiate. For these reasons, we present a design for an abstract proof evaluator that interprets a synthesis trace into a machine checkable proof certificate. We then demonstrate the generality of the evaluator's design by instantiating this abstract evaluator for the three verifiers, HTT, VST, and IRIS. And finally, we apply this technique to certify Sussex synthesis of characteristic benchmark programs. Let's see how this abstract evaluator works. We can instantiate the evaluator for a target verifier by providing a custom proof step interpreter, which maps an SSL rule application in the synthesis proof tree to a corresponding step in the proof certificate. After synthesis, an instantiated evaluator traverses a proof tree encoding of the successful derivations and invokes the interpreter at each node to build the certificate. Now, I'll explain two strategies the evaluator uses to bridge the gap we observed earlier. First, we have deferred proof steps, the ability to delay the appearance of a proof step beyond when it's first interpreted. Intuitively, it behaves like a continuation in functional programming. Second, we have proof contexts, which let the interpreter store and later retrieve bookkeeping information throughout the traversal. The functional programming analog would be an accumulator. Using the instantiation for whole type theory, I'll now show how these features help our evaluator certify the list copying example. On the left is part of the synthesis proof tree, with the rest of the tree truncated at the bottom, and on the right is an HTT proof certificate. Some steps are easy to translate, like this read rule of SSL and its HTT counterpart. So our proof step interpreter just needs to map the rule to HTT's bind read R lemma. Other rules aren't so easy. In the second branch of the proof tree, everything is in the right order until this close rule. Close unfolds a constructor of an inductive predicate applied in the post condition. In our example, this occurrence targets one of the two singly linked lists from the specification's post condition and unfolds the predicate's second constructor. If you recall, such rules that transform the post condition must appear at the end of the verification proof in the final unification step. This is where deferred steps come in. Instead of emitting the counterpart step immediately, our interpreter can choose to add a step producing computation to a queue. The queue grows with items during traversal and gets released at the end of the proof. Like a continuation, this gives the interpreter some control over how proof steps get ordered. But if you look at the deferred step that gets computed from the close rule, you'll notice that the existential variables of the unfolded predicate constructor don't quite match up with what's actually needed in the HTT proof. This is because when this step was first enqueued, syslink referred to the existentials by their default names. But a few notes later, S prime is unified with another variable, S1, by this unify rule. Similarly, the other existentials also get their correct values later on. To keep track of these substitutions, we introduce an accumulator style proof context, which each invocation of the interpreter can update. For our example, let's add the first substitution to the proof context at the unify rule and do the same for the other two. Now, the enqueued computation can access this substitution knowledge at the end of the proof if we parameterize it with a proof context argument and invoke it with the final proof context. This way, the emitted step will have the correctly substituted existential variable names. That was an overview of two features of our proof evaluator inspired by continuations and accumulators. To assess our design, we wanted to answer two questions the efficiency of the certification in terms of proof size and checking time, and any synthesizer or verifier design choices that complicate automated certification. To determine efficiency, we evaluated this technique 
against a number of other programs that Syslyc can synthesize. Proof sizes are relatively concise. Proof checking times are between 2 to 20 seconds for most of the HDT and IRIS examples. VST proofs take longer because the generated scripts rely on a VST automation tactic whose generality incurs a performance cost. For our second question, we found two key challenges. One is the difference in difficulty implementing support for each target verifier. HTT was the simplest. Thanks to its shallow embedding of both SL propositions and object language, there was no need to distinguish program and proof level terms. VST is notable for targeting real, machine-executable C programs. Although VST provides advanced proof automation support, it surprisingly didn't always make things easy for us. Unlike HTT, VST uses a lot of custom notation to simplify the proof context, so in order to design additional proof automation tactics, we had to dig into the implementation details behind the nice notation. Naturally, this made the corresponding automation more fragile. We faced the most difficulty with IRIS, whose standard human-guided proofs require lots of explicit goal management and hypothesis name tracking, to a degree that it's troublesome even with our proof context. So we extended IRIS with new tactics to let us write proofs in Syslix proof style that relies heavily on heap unification. Unfortunately, IRIS's unification tactics are more fragile compared to VST's, so it needs to be done very carefully to keep the proofs tractable. Another challenge was recreating the steps performed during synthesis that aren't recoverable from the proof sketch. Pure non-spatial assertions aren't handled much by separation logic, so Syslic delegates their checking to external SMT solvers, which act as an oracle to determine whether an implication is valid or not. On the other hand, a proof assistant like Koch needs a constructive proof of the same facts more than just the yes or no answers that SMT solvers can provide. So to match the oracular insight of SMT solvers, we turn to certified solvers, or hammers as they're generally referred to as. Hammers are single line commands that enable powerful proof automation capabilities. They usually work by communicating with an external automated theorem prover, or ATP, to find a solution using the lemmas available to it. For our purposes, we extracted and formatted pure entailments like this into lemmas, and then solved them with Cock Hammer, a certified solver library. Then, by adding the proved lemma as a hint, it can be used by Cock's automation tactics during the main proof of the program. As a stretch goal for HTT, we also certified some additional, more complex programs. For all of these, the main proofs went through, but sometimes the certified solvers needed manual assistance to solve the extracted auxiliary pure lemmas. In the future, it could be interesting to explore some middle ground between full automated and user-guided certification. To summarize, we sought to bridge the gap between synthesis and verification. We introduced an abstract proof evaluator framework with features inspired by continuations and accumulators. We then instantiated the evaluator for three verifiers and certified around 15 characteristic benchmarks with all three, plus some extras with HTT. And with that, we have fully certified program synthesis. Thank you for listening.